So we're here in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park for Outside Lands, which is a three-day festival featuring more than 60 bands. Now, the festival's gonna last for three days, and during that time, there's gonna be more than 100,000 people streaming through the gates. Now, you can't just set up camp in the middle of Golden Gate Park and just see what happens. It takes a whole lot of planning, weeks, months in advance, to book the bands, to set up carts, to set up food, to set up electricity, to set up internet. I mean, there's tons of stuff you have to consider. So we went behind the scenes and we talked to the founders to find out exactly how it is they can put on a festival of this size and have it run smoothly. Obviously the first thing is uh, finding your location uh, and being able to uh, you know, secure the ability to do it. Obviously here in San Francisco, uh, in a place like Golden Gate Park, there's so many levels of bureaucracy and things that you have to go through to be able to utilize a, a property like this, and, and rightfully so, because it is one of the most you know, amazing parks in the world, and it's, it's used uh, by the people of the city on a regular basis. So you know, it took us a while to be able to create uh, the right set of parameters and deal structure and all the things that you need to, for a city to feel like it's worth their while. In a lot of ways, I mean, it's a year-round endeavor. There's all sorts of things that happen on a different timeline. So, you know, for instance, talent booking happens really early on, especially at the higher levels. You know, bigger bands usually are planning their schedules further out in advance. Um, you know, they're, they're probably looking, you know, six months to a year in advance at their schedules. Uh, and it's a long process to, you know, try to figure out which of the top bands make sense for your festival for any particular year. Uh, so that's that's a really early on process in terms of the logistical operations of it. Um, you know, the first year you do it, you really start w way early. I mean, even we we would probably started a year or two before we even launched the first festival of doing layouts and kind of just coming up with a general plan of how we would use the park, e even identifying what areas we wanted to use. We really get about a week. Uh, between when we first step on here and start building stuff and to when the doors open. There's a couple different, I'd say, big headline departments. Uh, one is production, and production is basically, when you say that in a concert festival setting, you're talking about stages. You're talking about the sound and lights and everything to do with the actual performance of the artist. Uh, then you have your site operations. Um, and that kind of, in a way, is over the entire festival because they kind of coordinate almost everything. So that, that entails layout, that entails all of the logistical systems from sanitation, bathrooms, electrical, security. Uh, the other department that kind of melds into that a little bit is concessions. Here at Outside Lands, it's a, it's a much more intensive, detailed thing because one of our big initiatives here is uh, utilizing all the great restaurants and uh, purveyors of the Northern California community. 75 wines. We have, uh, a, you know, Rotorer pouring sparkling wine out here in the courtyard. So with 75 wines, I bet we have about around a thousand cases of wine out here. 12,000 bottles at 750 milliliters. It's a lot of wine. It's a lot of wine to go through in about 72 hours. We use um, two-way radios or 16-channel radios for uh, a lot of the on-site stuff. Obviously, everybody has cell phones, so there's a lot of communication happening through that. And then we do have a whole IT department. I mean, we probably start with a core group of like 50 or 100, you know, uh, in terms of our staff plus the vendors that are coming in to do stuff. Uh, and then each day it kind of grows and grows. And by the time we open gates on Friday, with all the concession stands staffed and all the different specialty areas, sponsorship areas, we're up to about 2,000 people. One of the biggest things is, is cleanup. You know, we want to turn the house the next day so when you walk in here, it, you know, we, there, you don't see anything. One of the things that's interesting here at Golden Gate Park is that, you know, we're very, um, you know, careful to not tear up any of the turf that's here. So we actually have special forklifts that are fitted with tires that uh, are these real big round tires. They look like tires from a race car. And we you know, have a pretty robust fence that surrounds the perimeter. Um, we also have uh, you know, 
regular concert security uh, that patrols different sections that we think are more vulnerable than others. We have a, a mounted patrol company that actually um, patrols uh, the whole perimeter. Whenever we go and do an event, we start with what can we source locally. Hopefully it costs less, there's less environmental impact, and then probably, you know, first and foremost, that we want to support whatever local economy we're working in. Things like sound systems are usually, you know, out on the road touring with different bands and stuff, so you have to sort of plan how you can get one. Uh, but we are actually using a local company for that this year. So really, a, in, a, in a place like this, a really good percentage of stuff is local. in the middle of a park and just like go with it. You can't just do that. So we're here in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. Yeah, Outside Lands! Yeah, we're at Outside Lands Fest. That was rad. Let's do that again.